In a series of articles, we document new facts about the concentration, inequality, and persistence of medical spending across nine different countries. These nine different countries are the United States, England, the Netherlands, Denmark, Germany, France, Canada, Japan, and Taiwan. Medical spending as a share of GDP has been rising over the past two decades throughout the developed world. Despite this, there's substantial variation in um, levels of spending across the world. So in, in our study, at one end we have Taiwan, where 6% of GDP is spent on healthcare, and at the top we have uh, the US, where they spend 16%. Our aim is for the, our results to help policymakers in understanding the distribution of spending, uh, improving projections of future spending, and potentially providing tools which will help policymakers identify areas where costs could be reduced. The researchers across these nine different countries have worked hard over the last two years to better compile often aggregate and population level data sets, however data that where we can actually measure individual level medical spending. These data happen to come from, for some countries, national health insurance systems and thus uh, actually government provided data. In other countries it happens to come from private insurer data where again we think that we can extremely accurately measure medical spending. The main challenges in this project were to make the results as comparable as possible. And researchers across the countries have worked very hard to meet these challenges as far as they can. We document uh, four new facts for the countries in question. First, we document the share of national medical spending that is accounted for by those in the last calendar year of their life. Second, we document new facts about uh, medical spending across the income distribution. So we can better understand, is it relatively high versus low income individuals who are, consume medical care? Third, we measure the concentration of medical spending. And this way we can better measure, for example, what share do the top 10% of all medical spenders uh, consume in the way of national health care resources. And then finally, we measure the persistence of medical spending so we can think about not just concentration of medical spending at a particular point in time, but actually the concentration of medical spending over time as well. So uh, we found that across the countries, uh, and spending in the last calendar year of life accounted for between 5 and 10 percent of total medical spending. Um, the exception was Taiwan, where it was nearer to 16 percent. For the over 65s, the range was from between 9 and 20 percent. Again, Taiwan was the outlier at around 29 percent. Perhaps surprisingly, in the United States, about only 5 percent of medical spending goes towards those in the last year of life. It's definitely the case that those in the last year of life spend more than those at other ages. However, there really just aren't that many people in the last year of life. And so for this reason, medical spending in the last year of life is relatively modest. I think this is actually very surprising given the fact that in the popular press, as well as conventional wisdom, end-of-life care is an extremely large driver in medical spending and perhaps also in terms of the increase in medical spending over time. The second finding is that there's generally a negative correlation between med medical spending and income. Uh, the exceptions are Japan and Taiwan for the over 65s and the US and Taiwan for the under 65s. Now we think this is interesting because it's really the United States and these East Asian countries that heavily use patient cost sharing. And so we can see that patient cost sharing, which may provide incentives against overconsumption of medical care, also produces inequality in access to medical care. The final finding is that in all countries, medical spending is highly concentrated in a small fraction of the population, it's persistent over time, and it rises rapidly after age 50. And that's consistent with the pattern of ill health in the population. We think this research can be useful in a variety of different ways. So first of all, it helps us better understand what are the important determinants of medical spending. This can help better shine a light in terms of what should be key priorities in terms of healthcare policy. The second is that we're hoping that this can be uh, uh, a lead into a larger project on better understanding key determinants of medical spending across countries. 
So there are three areas in, we, in particular where we think our findings could be particularly useful to policymakers. The first um, surrounds the total cost of end-of-life care, where we find um, in the region of 5 to 10% of total medical spending is accounted for the, by those in the last calendar year of life. Now, while this is a significant share, it's not overwhelming, and therefore there are likely to be other factors which are driving the increase in costs. Second, and also related to end-of-life care, is that we find that total costs of end-of-life as a share of medical spending are typically higher in countries with low levels of provision of social or long-term care, like nursing homes. And in these countries, um, the healthcare systems try to rely more heavily, tend to rely more heavily on hospitals. So one potential route for um, policymakers wanting to reduce the cost of end-of-life care is to potentially increase the role of or provision of social care or long-term care. Finally, um, our finding relating to uh, the, correl the negative correlation uh, between income and medical spending with the poor spending more than the rich on medical spending. This suggests that healthcare systems in the main act to redistribute income from the rich to the poor. Therefore, any attempt to cut medical spending um, to reduce costs uh, is likely to have a disproportionate impact on the poor.